Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm just going to show you briefly how to use the Hansver dictionary. Now, any student of Arabic who's serious about Arabic needs this dictionary. And the way it's, uh, it's actually formatted in a very good way. And the way it's formatted, let me just explain this briefly, is it goes by the perfect, which is the past tense, and it's the root form. So how we have fa'ale, maybe we showed that, fa'ale, or fa'ude, or fa'ile, depending on which one it is. This is mentioned first, followed by, so this is the past tense, followed by the present tense, followed by the mustar or the verbal noun, and that's going to be in brackets, and sometimes there's more than one mustar. And then you have the derived stem uh, verb forms. So from the main three-letter root, you get um, derived verbs, so different patterns. And we'll learn these, inshallah, later on. Let me just demonstrate what I mean. So this is a page of the Hansver Dictionary. Let's look at Qatara. So we have a Qaf, a Ta, and a Ra. Now, as you can see, there's an A there, A there, A there. So it actually tells you what harakat on top of there. It's going to be Qa, Ta, Ra. Uh, so we know that's going to be a Fatha, and it's going to be a Fatha. So the Qaf will have a Fatha, the Ra will have a Fatha. And the Ta is the one that changes. It could either be a Fatha, a Kasra, or a Dhamma. And that's indicated by this letter here. So if it was an I, it would be a Kasra. If it was a you, it will be a dhamma, and here it's an A, which means it's a fatha. So, the past tense is qatara. What does qatara mean? It says here, to fall or flow in drops, drip, uh, dribble, trickle. Okay, so we get the meaning of something dripping and trickling. So, it's like how the water drops. And we know that qatara is the base form, which is he or it dropped. So, we could say qatara al ma'u. The water dripped. That's the past tense. Now, we'll learn in um, in, the, in the next following lesson the the present tense or what is known as fail mudara, which is the imperfect. And this u here will indicate that this ta will get a dhamma. So it would be. Yak Turu. This will always be a dhamma here, so d don't. That's gonna always be there. But what we're worried about is this letter here, on top of the ta, which is a dhamma because it says it here. We'll learn this inshallah. You might not understand this at this moment, but inshallah, you'll get there. And then we have the mustar. The mustar is the original word where these verbs are derived from. And we have actually two. We have Qatrun and Qataran. Two mustards. That's this form, the, the base form. Then we have here number two. We have here number five, number six, the Roman numerals, number ten. These are different forms of the verb by adding certain radicals or doubling uh, a radical and we get new meanings from this base form here we'll learn all these inshallah and they have their own meanings associated with them which are which have a related meaning to this meaning here anyway so and also you'll notice there'll be there'll be other uh, there'll be words as well so as you can see which is qatta'u and then you have so, so this would be a fatha, and then this indicates it's a it's a shadda with a ta. So it's qatta to carve, to cut, to trim, clip something. And then you'll notice here, you have the letters here, the sorry the, the Roman numerals which indicate different verb forms. We'll be learning those inshallah. 
and this is um, قطن. This is this is a basic word that you learn in basic Arabic, which means a cat. So there's an I, which indicates a kasra, and then two T's with a dot on the bottom, which means it's a koshedda. So قطن. قطن. And then we have the plural of قط. قطن. What's the what's the plural of it? It's قطاتون. And then we have some other plurals of it. And then you have Qitta is a female cat. And Qatitatun is a kitten. So we can get a lot of meanings from this Hansfair dictionary. It's just a matter of knowing how to use it. Um, and there's one, one aspect is when you're learning Quran Arabic, um, this is it might be quite limited using this modern dictionary to find meanings of words in the Quran. For example, you could have one word in the Hans Ver, which can go on for maybe, say, half a page in a classical dictionary, such as, you know, the Sanad Arab or, uh, you know, other classical dictionaries. It might go for 10 pages or 15 pages. You have to realize th that this dictionary is quite limited in trying to understand words in the Quran. You can understand, you know, words at a basic level what they mean but the the intricacies of the actual uh, of the meaning of words and the subtleties in the words you cannot get that in these types of dictionaries and i've actually noticed people actually going to these dictionaries and trying to find meanings of words in the quran with these dictionaries i can tell you now and this is you know from my experience is that doing this way will really limit your understanding of the Quran and sometimes even w this will actually give you a very shallow understanding of the Quran a lot of people that criticize the Quran actually use modern standard Arabic to do to do so for example you find you know there are there are many articles out there that talk about the linguistic errors in the Quran now they fail to realize that they they're using modern standard Arabic to do this modern standard Arabic is a very very simplified version of classical Arabic the rules of grammar in in just um, basic you know nahu is not the same as those of classical arabic the, the language that the arabs spoke in the time of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam people need to realize their limits and you can't use this dictionary to ten to translate verses in the quran that's just some advice inshallah wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wasallam